All right. Welcome to the Microdesk webinar series. My name is Megan Fulligar. I'm the marketing manager up in New York. I manage the um, eastern region of Microdesk um, sales territories. Welcome to today's webinar, SketchUp Advanced Landscape, Creating a Topography Model. All right, just a little bit about Microdesk. We're an Autodesk Gold, Oracle, and Google partner. We offer technology training um, and consulting solutions for the AUC industry. We have 12 offices nationwide, and that includes 90 plus consulting specialists and software developers. Presenting today's session, we have with us Microdesk senior consultant, Peter Marchese. Um, Peter joins Microdesk as a senior consultant with expertise in architectural technology solutions. He has extensive working knowledge of AutoCAD, architectural desktop, and Revit. At Microdesk, Peter works with national architecture firms implementing Revit. He specializes in custom training and content creation and leading firms through the process of creating standards and workflows based on building information modeling technology. This week's webinar will be taking a closer look into how SketchUp's landscape tools work. Peter will be guiding you on how to, to take those contour lines and create dynamic three-dimensional models of your product, project's landscaping. Um, just a few logistics before we begin. In order to minimize any background distractions, you are all on mute for the duration of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. Peter will, Peter will address as many questions as he can at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time, we'll provide you with our contact information so you can follow up with us. Um, and now I turn it over to Peter. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. So what we're going to be focusing on today is going to be SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp Pro version 8. Uh, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the sandbox tools. And this is something that actually comes <coughs> to me with SketchUp. So if you've ever wondered where they were, first thing I can do is I'm going to go in here, take a look at my preferences. So you get, always helps if I remember where that is. There we go. Cool. So I'm going to come in here, go to my preferences, go to your extensions. And all you have to do is check the box for sandbox tools. One of those things that actually comes with SketchUp, but typically it's uh, disabled. So you're not normally going to have that. Once that's enabled, you're going to have this toolbar. So what I'm going to be doing is focusing on these tools. There's one external plugin that is, again, it's a free download, but there's one external plugin that I'm going to be playing with. But that's going to be near the end. Okay. <clears throat> now, for the most part, this is going to be a little bit of a quick snippet of one of our advanced landscaping classes. And while you can get your landscape from Google Earth, which is great, if you have a real space and you're not going to be modifying it much, just pull it right from the internet and you can start rolling with it. But if what you're trying to do is make a custom site or you have an existing site that you want to manipulate or change, this is one of the tools I can take advantage of. Now, first one up here I'm going to go with is from scratch. When I click on this, you can ask me for what my grid spacing should be. And I'll say 25 feet. And what you're essentially doing is laying out a grid for your topography. So this has created a big surface for me to work with. So like most anything else, you can actually modify it, change it, do whatever you need to after the fact. But this is just a very quick way to give me a nice gridded surface, whether I want to be using it as topography or not. That's up to you, but it's a nice grid. From here, what I can do is start to manipulate this. And just to the right of from scratch is a tool called Smooth. Clicking on this can ask you for a radius. And when you click on this, nothing's going to happen. Nothing is wrong. What happens is by using the From Scratch, it creates a group. You have to edit that so you can actually get to the content of this area. And then when I go to Smooth, you'll see a circle. 
this is showing you the area of the radius of the smooth that is going to be manipulated. Easiest way to look at this tool is as a push pull for topography. If I click on this, you can see how I'm literally pushing and pulling the surfaces up. Now, right now, I'm just clicking on areas and modifying it that way. If I wanted to, I could have pre selected an area as well. So, by manipulating the size of my radius and then moving around, I can start to really play around with what's happening on my site. So just a couple of quick things for how I can manipulate what I'm working with. And you can make this as crazy peaked or as up or down as much as you'd like. And you can still inference other areas as well. So if you're trying to smooth something out, make this all the same height, I can start to do that. Now if you want to get a little bit more specific in terms of how areas here are going to be triangulated or modify certain pieces of this. What you can do, still within the group, move all the way over to the right hand side and we have two buttons here within the actual uh, sandbox tools. You have add detail and then flip faces. What happens is add detail allows me to come in and pick specific pieces and just move that point up. So if I really didn't want to have to worry about the size of the radius, I can just come over here and pick these individual pieces and put them right where I want. So what it says add detail, it literally means that. I'm just modifying little parts of it. I'm not going wholesale and grabbing, you know, 50 square feet of content. Now the flip faces essentially takes areas like this and modifies the triangulation. So you can see how it's either going to be going this way or that way on something like that. If you're not that familiar with SketchUp, one of the things that you'll end up noticing is that it has a lot of hidden geometry when you start to triangulate surfaces. What this is allowing me to do is essentially change how that area is being triangulated. So it's going to happen one way or another. Whether it's something that you'll see or not, doesn't matter. It's going to look like it's bending like fabric. But this at least allows me to control which direction it's going in. So those are just a couple of things that I can do with some of the sandbox tools to start from scratch. Now, what's likely to happen is that you're not going to be starting completely from scratch. You're probably going to be getting something from somewhere. So what I'm actually going to do is say, what happens if I import content from CAD? Okay, well that content from CAD is going to come in as lines and pan out a little bit here. More than likely I'll see layers that can actually control this. So let's say that this is my CAD content that I just brought in. So you can see that it actually has elevations. Essentially this line work in space at the moment though. So what I'm actually going to do is take all this line work and actually set it up so I can create all my topography based on that. So rather than me having to create my, my gridded area and then push and pull essentially all these areas up or down which could take quite a while, what I'll end up doing is coming up here and saying from contours. Now, that's how a thing happens here. Most of the other tools I was using was I would click on the tool and then build something. This is one of the ones where I actually have to pick the elements to manipulate first. Do that from contours and still have a problem. Just like the other tools, one of the keys here is that the groups are going to be partially necessary but you don't want to be selecting certain content as a group or to be nested. And this is going to come up a few times. In order for this to work, I need to either explode this or be inside the group. Then grab it all, then tell it to build. And at that point, I'm going to sit back for a second while it thinks, and now I have a surface. And just like before, everything here is actually being triangulated. So if I did tell it that I wanted to see that hidden geometry, you can see all the little edges that this created in the process of making this. So one of the things I might end up doing later on is coming back and tweaking it with that flip faces or taking this into consideration when I start applying different things to it. 
Okay. So now I have a surface. It's based off my contours from CAD. Now I decide, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? Maybe you want to colorize this, or maybe you want to actually show a road or something on here. So what I can end up doing is bringing that content in. So let's say what I have is a site plan. It has my road, some parking, some more information on there, whatever it is that I feel is important for what I'm working with. So in this case, what am I going to end up doing is I have a tool over here called Drape. I click on Drape. I want to know, okay, what is it that I'm looking to drape? So I want to drape my site plan on the actual contours here. So first thing I do is thing I want to drape, thing I want to drape it on, and it thinks for a minute. And now you can actually see that that there has now been draped onto this. This is one of those times where I need to make sure that things line up where I want them to line up. So looking at this in perspective is a little bit awkward. You probably are going to want to end up changing this so that it's parallel projection. A lot easier to make sure things line up. But I want to put this on top of it exactly where it needs to so that the line work can be projected straight down onto the surface. That's that. Now one of the benefits of this is that if I do come in here and I just want to start painting things, I can actually paint different materials where I need them to be. And it does that. Now you notice I have this one right through that. The reason for that is because when I actually did this, you notice that there's another subgroup in there. This isn't actually on the surface itself. So just like normally working with a group, dial into the point where I can see that. Now it behaves the way that I want. And now I can literally paint it, and it breaks up my topography or my surface into different pieces. So I can actually have a lot of control on this. So, so far so good. We have our site plan. We have some topography that has been placed on this. So what I can start to do now is say, well, okay, I've got that broken up. What if I have imagery that I want to put on here? Now technically the drape tool would work with this as well. So I click on drape, that to this, but I'm not going to be very happy with the result when it finishes. Because what will end up happening is all of these areas here will end up getting triangulated. Let me break this down once. What I need to do is make sure that this actually drapes it correctly. And that's actually where that little extra plugin comes in that I mentioned before. I have a plugin here called Super Drape. Yeah. It's a little bit backwards from what I was doing before, and that when I select this, I need to pick on the thing that I want to drape. There we go. And then drape onto. It thinks for a bit, and then it'll put on there. In this case, I'm still going to have to edit this a little bit because what I need to do is select the element that is inside that group. And it's just thinking for a bit. Now, the plugin that I'm using is a free plugin. If you just do a web search for Super Drape SketchUp, you'll actually find it. So there we go. So let me explode that once. Like that. And up to that. That'll think. And as it finishes calculating here, what it'll end up doing is start to paint that on the surface. But if you remember all the triangulations that you saw previously, it's not going to triangulate the image. It's actually going to make sure that it lines up correctly along all the different contour lines, which normally it would not actually do. It just does take a few minutes to actually run through the calculations on it. There we go. You can see how it literally baked it right onto the surface. Now, 
one other thing that does come up with this is that what happens if you have a site that you have the existing site, but you want to show different options? What happens if I change one area of it? What you can end up doing is actually breaking that area into two pieces. So I'm digging into my surface. So I'm in the, the lowest group on this right now. And what I'm going to do is just draw a shape and push pull this. And I'll make that a group so I can move it around without it, you know, merging into anything. And put that right about there. What I can do now is select everything here, right click and say I want to inter intersect all these faces with my selection. Once that's done, I can just delete that box because I no longer need it. Now, I broke my topography to have two completely different pieces. So this does something very similar to the drape that I did here. I put my line work where I needed it to be. I set that up. And now if I want to, I can come over here with the smooth tool and just change that one area. So if I want to, I can take that and I can literally copy that 50 feet to the right. Sorry, it's still taking. So I can copy that 50 feet to the right and say, okay, well, this is option one, this is option two. Just depends on what I'm trying to do and how I want to go about actually showing this. Pull that a little bit further in. There we go. So it's a couple of ways that I can start to manipulate and change what my design is going to be. And again, if I really wanted to show multiple sides, there we go. And I have two options that I can play with. So it's one of those great things where because SketchUp is so simple and it's very fluid to go from one thing to the next, you can very quickly put together a lot of different content that you need for your topography. If you have a hand sketch, you can take a photo of it or scan it, bring it in here, and then actually apply that and bake that to the surface as well. So that way I can actually show them what I'm intending and it will match the, out, the typical output of SketchUp in terms of the way that it looks and feels. So those are just come with a couple of the basics. If you want to get much more in depth with this or look at things, more, uh, more plugins, more options, more things that we can actually do, Please let us know and uh, take a look at our advanced classes. Are there any questions? All right, again, if you have any questions, you can just type them into the webinar toolbar under the questions. It looks like we have a quiet audience today, Peter. <laughs> just, just so you know, if you are in SketchUp and you want to be able to export out to multiple formats, then you will need to be in the pro form. So if you are looking to take this and then export it out to a DWG to use elsewhere, you will need to have the uh, pro version. Otherwise, you can do a lot of this inside of the, uh, the free version. All right, thank you, Peter. If you do come up with any questions or you would like to learn more about SketchUp and how to get started, you can visit us at www.microdesk.com or you can always give us a call. Again, thanks for joining us. Um, have a great rest of the day.